I am Heidi Benjaminson, your host of Confidence Coaching, a podcast for mothers who want to stay calm and anchored in any situation. Life isn't a spectator sport. Success comes to those who show up every day with a pocket full of courage, grit, and a little sparkle. I'm glad you're here. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 173, Slowing Down. Welcome, friends and family. I'm creeping up on 200 episodes. How cool is that? If you get a chance, would you leave me a five-star review on any platform, wherever you listen? I'd really appreciate it. And share any episode that really helps you. Share it with a friend, a sister, a neighbor. I've been preparing this episode about slowing down for a while, and I'm excited for the examples you're going to hear. This isn't just about slowing down physically or moving through life relaxed. That might be an outcome or a result of what I'm going to share today. I want to share with you a lot of real life examples from my life of how slowing down what I'm thinking, slowing down to question my beliefs and thinking how that's driving my emotions, slowing down to reflect on how I act, how maybe I acted in the past a certain way, slowing down to ask myself questions. I want to share how this level of slowing down can totally change your life. This is the work I do with clients. We slow down and focus on specific interactions, specific situations. And by slowing down and gaining awareness and dissecting our thought process, we actually go faster towards changing how we feel and we gain much more emotional calm and control. Doing this truly has transformed my energy and emotional state. I can show up as the person I really want to be in my relationships. I do remember when I started working with coaches and I didn't appreciate at the beginning the reasoning behind very slowly picking one specific situation, stopping to identify and outline exactly what I'm thinking in the moment, to name the emotion, to list what I do and don't do when I'm feeling that way, to reflect completely on me, how I'm showing up, to see what I'm creating for myself and the energy I'm projecting to others. I thought it was tedious. I wanted to rush through it. I didn't get it yet. And honestly, the only way to get it and see the power is to do it daily, to really slow down and be reflective. So if you think slowing down and intentionally answering these questions is tedious, I get it. And I still hope you do it. Suddenly it will get so easy and suddenly you'll find you're breaking out of old patterns. You'll focus on your lane and release trying to control other people's lanes. So this is how slowing down to examine and change is done. Several years ago, I saw a social media post during the first year of COVID where someone I knew had invited a group of people on Zoom to participate in a special announcement. They then posted a picture of the people on Zoom and the announcement for everyone else. I had this initial pang of jealousy and almost being offended that I wasn't included. I felt it go up through my chest and then I stopped myself. I asked myself, hey, what's going on here? Are you close with this person? I realized, no, not that close. I asked myself, if this was your child, would you have invited these people to this type of Zoom announcement? Again, the answer was no. And suddenly my jealousy had been processed and it was gone. My default programming to be included created that first emotion. But by noticing it and slowing down my thinking, I realized That first emotion isn't really how I intentionally want to feel. And I had forgotten the whole thing like a minute or two later. Questioning the validity of our first emotions, slowing down to examine these emotions from a few angles often has us moving through these emotions and out of them pretty quickly. In my coaching certification with the Life Coach School many years ago, I got very good at building the CTFAR models. This is one tool I teach my clients. The circumstance 
or data outside of our lane is a circumstance line. It's the first thing. It's the only thing that we don't have control over. I remember over and over listing times where maybe in a situation I felt offended. Offended would then be the middle of that CTFAR model, the F, the feeling. I would identify what I was thinking that created that feeling of being offended. And it would vary in each situation. Maybe a thought like, oh, that was so mean of that person to say that. By slowing down and identifying the actions I would take and the reality and the result I would create for myself, I realized over and over when I am offended, I will then start avoiding that person or I'll push that person or that place out of my life. By slowing down, I saw all of my behaviors and was able to separate what I create for myself from the person who might be saying an offensive comment, or maybe it really isn't that offensive. In so many situations, I saw the result of being offended is that I push, again, I push these things out of my life. Now, this is how this slowing down has now sped up for me. I can feel that temptation to be offended and I can then decide, Do I really want to push this person or place out of my life? Is being offended going to get me the result I want? Several months ago, I was at the gym with my husband and one of the coaches was being pretty sarcastic and actually kind of rude. I could see people being offended and my husband wasn't too happy. In that quick moment, I told myself, I don't want to choose to be offended because I know what happens when I'm offended. I know I will stop going to this coach's class and their class fits into my schedule most of the time. Slowing down helped me in that moment quickly choose the result I want. I wanted to keep associating with this gym, so I chose an emotion other than being offended. Actually, I ignored the coach. And funny thing, the coach isn't there anymore. Either way, the many, many times I developed a CTFAR model and saw the result of being offended has now helped me be clear with myself to choose with intention if I want to be offended. And yes, there are times this would be a good emotion. I want to avoid people who are offensive. I want to stay away from people who ultimately do not uplevel my life. So being offended isn't always an emotion to stay away from. It's just that slowing down to really choose the result I want has been so much more impactful. Slowing down helps me choose with intention the feeling I want to have to help me get everything I want in life. Over a year ago, we were meeting with our builder of our house, who was giving us bad news that day about when the house would be ready and was listing off all the reasons. We were so disappointed and feeling pretty angry. The delays seemed like they could have been avoided, but they were all in the past. I get so aggravated when I'm not in control of a situation. I know that about myself. The new timeline would mean that we would spend our holidays in our Airbnb. I could see my husband and I were both processing what the delays would mean for us as a family. In that moment, I slowed down what I was thinking and feeling. I made myself breathe deep, get anchored, and get in control. I slowed down and asked if getting angry and irate had any upside here. Would it make the builder move faster? The answer was an obvious no. In fact, if we had been really difficult buyers, they might have put a much less priority on our home. I slowed down and asked myself, how do I want to feel right now? What is it going to feel like if I'm in integrity with myself, so I'm sticking up for how we feel, and at the same time, staying on the same side with our builder. I didn't want to feel or act like we were both against each other because we weren't. I could choose to believe his information about the delays, or I could be argumentative and combative. I chose the first by slowing down and thinking through the situation and choosing to feel centered. I could be assertive and understanding at the same time. I could politely and firmly request a lot of updates so we stayed on the same page. I know if I had chosen to be the victim in that situation or in any future situation, I know I'm going to then make someone else the villain. Slowing down so many times in past situations has helped 
me see this. So in that moment, I could slow down and realize there's no villain here. Even though I could feel out of control, which I basically was in that building situation, I knew I can still stay in control of my reactions and how I represent myself. We ended up with a very good relationship with the builder and also always supported our needs and pushed for the highest quality service. Slowing down allowed us to show up as our best and helped bring out the best in our builder. Slowing down when I feel critical of others or a situation has really helped me feel less critical and be a nicer, compassionate person. Often I just have to ask myself, Heidi, is this even a problem? One of my sons wears shorts almost all the time, even in snow. When he was much younger, I didn't have the skills to question my opinions about his clothing. I was critical because he didn't dress the way I would have. Then I started asking, why is it a problem to me that he's wearing shorts in what I think is cold? He's a very smart kid. He owns long pants that fit. He doesn't get sick. He knows how to manage his own clothes if he needs something else. So I always told myself, Heidi, stop making something a problem for you that isn't a problem for someone else. Wearing shorts in winter is a very low stakes situation to practice slowing down and realizing I am not in charge of how other people run their lives. So in bigger stake situations, I can slow down and ask repeatedly, why is this a problem for me? When I slow down and reflect on how I act, when things are a problem for me, when I see the negative and critical energy, I project into the world through my tone of voice, rolling eyes, choice of words, all of it. I see that I become the problem in the situation. My criticism is the problem, not the person driving slow or the person paying with dimes in front of me or the person posting ridiculous things online. I get to slow down and ask myself, is this really a problem? Is this where you want to spend your mental and physical energy? Do you like how you act when this is a problem? If not, I tell myself I need to move along and just not make it a problem. I usually forget these petty problems in others when I realize how I act in response is either the problem or just realizing this just isn't a problem. It's my choice. Again, my response is always in my control. In earlier years of my marriage, I spent some mental time wishing my husband were different in certain areas, had some different qualities. It's funny to think back about because now my mental patterns are so different but I ruminated and wished he took the lead in different areas. When I did this, I was resentful and critical and just not nice. I wasn't able to focus on appreciating and accepting the many, many ways that he was much more than I could want. When these critical and resentful thoughts and feelings would arise, I started to self-reflect and ask myself, What if he expected me to know how to fix cars? Or what if he told me that his mother had made all of his siblings clothes, so why didn't I hand make our children's clothes? I use these examples because they're so extreme and so nothing like who I am. Also, they are absolutely nothing like he would say or think, but I quickly put myself in check. By slowing down to question myself and see how I would feel if I was married to someone who wanted me to have skills that are absolutely nothing that come natural to me, I could easily see the impact I'm having on him unintentionally. Slowing down helped me see over and over how I just don't want to be this type of person in my marriage. I could move out of this pattern of mental rumination and be a better partner when I slowed down to choose who I want to be. I changed the patterns by seeing myself in a different role in the picture. It's funny how much perspective we get when we change places with someone else. Slowing down helps us do this. Now, just this past Christmas vacation, my family was on a trip to Charleston and Savannah. I usually plan a trip and we stick to the agenda. I keep us on track. I plan fun trips and I like to be dependable. On day two of our trip... My son's friend got super sick and had to stay in the hotel. And that night, another three of us got sick. 
I woke up in Savannah texting my husband to find the closest CVS for some medicine for me. I barely rallied. We left my son's friend in the hotel with a lot of medicine and fluids and we pushed forward in the morning. Then we slowed down and we asked each other, wait, what are we doing? Let's go home. Let's cut this short. We're being ridiculous. Yes, it's a fun planned vacation and it isn't fun because we're going from CVS to CVS. Even being sick, I can be so focused on what I've planned that I can keep pushing forward. I can take action if it's what I've told myself that I'm going to do. Slowing down, pausing to actually assess the situation allowed us to realize in just one small second, we needed to pivot to a new plan. We packed up that afternoon, told the hotel we were leaving a day early. They nicely didn't charge us for that night, and we headed home to our own beds. I can sometimes take too long to slow down and gain perspective. I get the right perspective and I can easily change routes when I ask myself, what's the goal here? Are we even accomplishing what we want to? Can't we come back and just easily do this another time? I've had so many new interactions over the last 18 months, meeting new people, going to new places, slowing down prior to the event or interactions to visualize how I want to act what type of body language I want to have, how do I want to present myself, answering all of these questions and even having a mental picture of someone that I want to emulate has fueled me to show up as the most confident and open person I can be, who I want to be. Slowing down to picture this version of myself helps me override any default normal human insecurities. I've also slowed down to question where I want to be involved, what groups or activities will help me accomplish my bigger goals. Where will my vibe attract my tribe? Being very thoughtful has been so helpful for me to use my time and energy wisely. Every time I talk to my children who don't live at home, I slow down prior to them answering the phone and I recenter myself. I ask myself what type of inviting question I can ask them. I slow down to check my energy and see if my comments are projecting love and confidence or worry and fear. Sometimes I want to call them, then I slow down and ask why, and I realize my reasons are really to meet my emotional needs and will project insecurity and criticism to them. So I don't call them right then. I'm not perfect with this. I can't control at all how they respond to me or how they react to our conversations. But I can tell you that when I slow down to be thoughtful about what I want out of our interactions, we both enjoy the conversations so much more. Okay, here's the final slowing down example. And this is probably what anyone thinks first of when I say we're going to be talking about slowing down. Often we're in our cars rushing somewhere or zooming through the grocery store, or wishing our child's basketball game would end soon. We're wishing we were somewhere in the future so much that we're missing much of the present. And the present is the only place we can really experience. When you're driving home, answer the question, what's the rush? What am I wishing I could get home to sooner? Am I rushing to sit on the couch? Am I rushing to fold laundry? Why am I rushing to get out of the sun and away from the blue sky? What am I missing by rushing everywhere? Do I like being around people who are rushing everywhere? Do I like myself being all rushed? I've stopped being in a hurry and rushing anywhere because I'm constantly asking myself what I'm trying to get to. Now, there are a few reasons to rush. I did almost miss delivering a baby in a hospital. We had a reason to rush that day. And I'm so grateful it was midday traffic in Boston, not rush hour. If you are very late for a flight, well, then walk fast, be expedient. But in most situations, there is no rush. Rushing makes us miss life. We miss opportunities to connect with people, to make eye contact and smile, to ask someone how they are. We miss the everyday beauty of life. I heard a quote that said, I don't want extraordinary children. Rather, I want children who find the extraordinary in the ordinary moments of life. So I want to be this example for my children. I need daily reminders to slow down. 
I bought two very comfortable rocking chairs for my front porch to encourage the slowing down, the saying hi to neighbors, to enjoying a slower pace and enjoying the ordinary and then connecting with my family. So reach out to me. Where are you struggling to slow down? Give me examples of situations like I mentioned in this episode, situations where you want to learn to slow down your reactions so you can change what you're attracting into your life. Just changing one outlook, one perspective could be the shift your life needs. That's it for this week. If you would like more calm and hope and less worry in your life, Sign up for a free consult call at HeidiBenjaminson.com or DM me on social media. A confident mother is the greatest gift to her family, not a perfect mother. Our families want us to feel confident, anchored, and calm. I can help you uncover this version of yourself. Have a great week.